In the last video, we wrote a merge sort. Um, it worked with lists, and we tested it out and showed that it could work. We didn't actually show that it would whoops, have problems with this, but we said that our merge sort as written would not work well with large lists. And if I ran it with 10,000 elements, and you can see it crashed, and this is a stack overflow because the merge operation keeps calling itself over and over again. It has to call itself this many times. So we can't do 10,000 elements. My guess is we're good for 1,000 elements. 2,000, yes, still happy. And you'll note this returns really fast. So I can sort you know, a few thousand elements really quickly, but somewhere above 5,000, eight, Oh, eight's happy too. Nine. Nine's happy, but 10,000 is apparently not. Oh, we got to do 10,000 that time. 12,000. Oh, 20 crashed. Okay, so the thing is that the merge sword is best for really big lists. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to make this work on really big lists. And I can make it so I write a different merge that uses a while loop, and it's an imperative merge. Or I can take this and I can make it tail recursive. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take that second merge. We're going to write a tail recursive one. And we're going to make this, we're going to have the compiler force it to be tail recursive. So I want to put in what's called an annotation on here that says at tail rec. In order to be able to use that, I have to do an import. Now, we can demonstrate the actual advantage of this by coming back up here and trying to load this in. And it will say, could not optimize tail rec annotation method. Okay. So it says, I can't make this tail recursive. And the reason is because we have these dangling conses. So the merge might be the last thing on the line, but after we do the merge, we have to con something onto it. And so that is not tail recursive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a third argument. Okay. Work a little bit of our formatting there. And now we match these two things. Okay, well, this last thing that we're passing in is the is the values that we have put together so far. So with each element we are merging it on. And in order for this to work nicely, we're gonna wind up putting building things in reverse order because the only thing that's fast to do for uh, conses is to cons onto the front. Adding to the end is, is not efficient. So adding to the end of this list would not be uh, a good way for us to do things. So we're always going to be consing onto the front. That means that new, each new element that we get is going to add onto the front of that list, which means that when we get it back in the end, it's going to be in the reverse order. So this is going to need to, well, actually we could probably do that up here inside of the merge. We could put it down here so that after we merge we get them, but we could also put it inside of our base cases. So what happens if we get to a nil and an L2? Well, previously we just returned L2, but now we have this list here. And so what I want to do is I want to stick L2, let's see, those should be big elements. We're going to use a triple colon cons because we have two lists here. So the list that we're building up is in the wrong order. So we're going to reverse it so it's in the right order. And then we're going to stick it together with L2. Similar type of thing happens here. Okay, 
And what about this situation? Well, instead of having these dangling conses, because it's those things that were preventing this from being tail recursive, what we can do instead is take, this was our H1 case, we can take H1 and cons that onto LST, and here we're going to take H2 and cons that onto LST. Let's see if that's happy. Um, the merge, yep, our call to merge now needs a third argument, which starts off as an empty list. That compiles, and we can try this with 20,000 elements, and it's happy. Let's just add a zero, and there are 200,000 elements. Takes a little bit longer, but it still runs. So this is tail recursive. It can work for however long of a list you want, because it turns out the Scala compiler, compiler is converting this to a while loop for us. Um, okay, what order is this? How is this going to grow? Well, if I give it a list that has 100 elements in it, the first thing it's going to do is that's going to break it in two. And now I'm going to have two lists with 50 elements. And then each of those calls is going to break those in two. So I have two lists of 25. Repeat, repeat, repeat until we get down to one element. Okay. So how many times does that happen? Well, this should sound a lot like what we saw with our binary search previously, where we kept cutting our array in half to search for something. And we decided there that the order was log in. Now, in this case, the splitting happens log in times. But every time that we do one of these splits, we also do a merge. And this merge is order in. It has to run through every element in the two lists to combine them. So the total order, order of merge sort is order in log in. And so this is it's an order in log in sort, which happens to be a whole heck of a lot better than order in squared. It also happens to be the theoretically best that you can do for a comparison sort. So unless you do something that is doing more than just simple comparisons, in the case of a merge sort, our comparison is there inside of the merge, unless you have more information than just a basic comparison, you can't get better than this order. But you could, we saw it here, the fact that I was able to go up to 200,000 elements, and this still worked fairly quickly. This is not a highly optimized sort at this point, but because it's a good algorithm, it scales well. It would be kind of slow for small lists, but it is very efficient at as far as how it grows as the lists get larger and larger. So this is a merge sort uh, with a tail recursive merge, and it demonstrates to you how we can do divide and conquer with a branching, uh, a branching recursive algorithm, because note that merge sort calls itself twice here, to get a fundamentally more efficient sort, especially for large collections, than what we had done before.